praise the Lord. We want to welcome everybody out all over the internet, all over the world. Welcome to this time in the presence of God and in the spirit where God is, where God moves, where God speaks, where God demonstrates, where God welcomes us. There is no time, there is no distance. Amen. So right now I release my faith that whether it's tonight, tomorrow, next week, Russia, Sweden, China, Czechoslovakia, Paraguay, Indonesia, wherever you're at, the God that made all things, the God that is the Lord of all, moves into your life, touches you right where you're sitting, causes your eyes and your understanding to be enlightened, accepting Jesus Christ, being born again, raising you up out of the dirt, up out of your crippling infirmity, up out of the darkness of your despair, up out of the chains of addiction, up beyond, above, and over the walls of divorce. That the power, the resurrection of the Holy Spirit go into your life now, bringing salvation and deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. All the people of God said. Amen. 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 Give them a great big hand. Amen, amen, amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, we are going to get into the Word some more. Amen. I'd like to welcome everybody in this holy place, on this holy ground. God's already releasing holy revelation from His presence in the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For I have spoken in hearts in minds and in souls all over the earth in this last day. Many, many, many of my sons and my daughters, many of my servants and my holy handmaidens have heard the unction of my voice in their spirits and have been faithful to speak and say, Thus saith the Lord, the Lord is at hand. Jesus is coming. The hour is now. The day is soon coming. Many of you have heard my voice. Many of you all over the earth I have spoken to and whispered into and shaken you up into utterance. But I would say unto you now that I am beginning to breathe. I am beginning to breathe. Not just the breath of life from my presence. Not the, just the breath of resurrection and resuscitation from my presence. But I am breathing fire from my presence. I am breathing fire into the bones of those that will stand up and have already obeyed and said, Thus saith the Lord. Even now I am breathing and releasing holy fire from my presence into my vessels, that now as you rise up and say, Thus saith the Lord, the power of my presence and my fire of holiness will begin to burn up opposition, burn up resistance, burn up tradition, and you will speak and the enemy will scatter. You will speak and the captive will be set free. You will speak and the fire of my presence will consume the spirits of resistance, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. So speak, so speak, yes. so speak in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Ooh, hallelujah. Well, we began last week 
Thank you, Lord. Give me just a minute for blessings. Amen. For many in this last hour have said, is this all there is? Many have looked to the left and looked to the right. Many have looked at the church and said, is that all there is? But few have dove into my spirit and allowed themselves to submerge their souls into my word. Very, very few have dove into the waters of life. <coughs> they keep looking to man and what man is and what man's not. What church is and what church is not. Look into my spirit, for I am drawing those hungry hearts to submerge themselves and seclude themselves into my word, into the prayer closets, into the separation from the distractions, and I will feed your hungry hearts. And those that have already begun, I am drawing you to wells of life that not only will refresh your soul, but we will build the hunger of your heart, demonstrate in front of your own face, this is what you were made for, this is what you've searched for, this is what you've been longing for, and it will be imparted into your understanding, and the rest of your life you will know, this is why it happened, that is why it happened, this is why I was there, this is why I was there, and this is why I am here. Hallelujah. And I will deposit in you the fire of my presence, and you will rise up as those that I have spoken to and called as fiery ones to rise up and set the world upside down and reverse the curse in people's lives. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift your hands. Hallelujah. 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 These are the days of restoration. These are the days of refreshing. Refreshing in the presence of my spirit. And I will blow on souls. And I will blow on hearts. And I will blow on emotions that are empty and worn out and tired. And need to be filled. And need to rise up with new strength. And run not just to survive. But to run with purpose, understanding, and fulfillment of this is what I was made for. I will breathe into your dry bones. I will breathe into your empty hearts. I will breathe into the desert of your past where nothing worked. And I will raise up my will in you. And you will run with new zeal. And run with new power. And you will run and faint not in this last hour. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, that was for somebody. Amen. That was for a bunch of somebody's out there, but that was for somebody in here, too. Amen. 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 If that was for you, I would, I would immediately say I would see that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, open your Bibles with me, please. I'm going to try not to teach too long, which is probably a real faith project. <laughs> Mark chapter 14. Spirit of prophecy and the anointing of prophecy is on me so strong. 
have to force myself to, <coughs> to focus. It would be real easy for me to get back out into the spirit. Well, we stay in the spirit, and I'm talking about further into the spirit where this all goes away and I lose control. Right now. There's an element where we should live there all the time, but there's also a time where for everything, a season I need to teach right now. Amen? Look at somebody say, I'm hungry and I'm ready. I'm hungry and I'm ready. Last week we started a teaching. I didn't realize it was a start of a teaching on Gethsemane. Until the Spirit of God revealed to me that it was touching hundreds of hungry hearts all over the world. And that it was a, 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 a word from heaven for now, for appointed people to receive. Amen? Amen. Now look at somebody and say, I'm ready to receive. I'm ready to receive. I want you to understand that what Pastor TC is called to is for a remnant. I'm not deceived. I'm not stupid. I'm not silly. I don't think, and I don't even, I gave up years ago hoping a bunch of people would receive this. Biblically, in the last days, the day that you live in now, the majority of the body of Christ will fall asleep. And only half of them are going to wake up in time. So you have, you have to understand that when a man of God or a woman of God is speaking from the heart of God, most of the body of Christ that's asleep don't want to hear it. So my, my, Naive, naive, naivety about people should receive this has disappeared. I know that what I teach and what I am, what God created me for, what God transitioned me to this place and this hour for now, most cannot have ears to hear. By choice, not because God's holding it back from them. Amen. Amen. Having ears to hear, they can't hear. Having eyes to see, they can't see. That doesn't make me special. It just declares the day, days that we live in, the body of Christ, the bride, is asleep. Amen. And the only ones that will hear it are the ones that want to wake up. Amen. you got to want to receive. God doesn't make you grow. Come on. Amen. You need to write that down in your heart. I'm only going to grow to the level I want to. Amen. 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 And nobody can make me want God. Amen. Amen. People can motivate you in certain ways to pursue God. People can motivate you in certain ways to hear from God, to speak to God, to study God, to, to pursue God. But nobody can put the want to in your heart. Amen. 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 you got to be able to look at somebody and say, I am hungry. And not look for them to make you hungry. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Remember we read in Proverbs that to the full person, honey is disgusting. All the cookies and all the, when, when you're just eating all the time and so full you can't hardly breathe, the, the, the most beautifully decorated table with the best food, you go, ah, no. But to a starving man, any bitter morsel is sweet. Come on. Amen. So you understand that that's a, that is a biblical definition of whether or not you're hungry. Amen. If it's got to be delivered right, in the right atmosphere, with the right ambiance, and the right dinner, Place and the right praise and worship and the right padded views and everything's got to be just right before I go, okay, I'll take a bite. You're not hungry. Amen. 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 But to somebody that's really hungry for God, welcome to the desert where God makes prophets. Amen. 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 And anything I can get from God is a treasure to me. Amen. 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 That defines whether or not you're hungry. You don't have to ask somebody, am I hungry? You don't have to look around and say, can you teach me how to be hungry? You're either hungry or you're not. And if you're not, you're in trouble. You better understand the severity of that. If you're constantly picking at what's on your plate, you're not hungry. And every time you drop your fork is a testimony against your relationship with God. Come on. Well, that got a big round of applause. Hallelujah. Why? Because nobody wants to find out, I'm not really hungry. Come on. But when you find out, I'm not really hungry, it should drive you to prayer. Amen. Amen. And if you find out you're not really hungry and it doesn't drive you to prayer, you're worse than not even hungry. You might be reprobate. Right. Amen. Amen. On three, we're going to say, that's good preaching for a white boy. <laughs> One, two, three. That's good that's good preaching for a white boy. Amen. Amen. How, how come you preach so hard? Because we're in a backslidden, morally bankrupt, destitute 
to church. Yes. Not this church, but the body of Christ that has no concept of what God calls right or wrong anymore. Come on. When the leader of the largest church in the world is saying, there's, there's no hell, you don't need to have Jesus, and homosexuality is okay, and we might even make them priests, the world that the world calls the church is in big trouble. Amen. 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 And think they're right with God. Amen. They're beyond not hungry, they're into being destitute. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And are so blinded by a lack of knowledge and a pathetic prayer life, they don't know what's God and what's not God anymore. Amen. They are caught up in the spirit of confusion of this age, building their own kingdom, saying God approves. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mocking you for praying in the Holy Ghost. So last week we looked at Gethsemane. Call of God, destined to Gethsemane. How many of you are called of God? Amen. Amen. If you feel that God wants to use you in life, there is no way around it. There is an appointment in Gethsemane with you and God. And I'll tell you this again, I didn't bring it out last week. I'm going to bring it out very clear for people out there that are writing me saying, I'm, I'm called of God, I'm called of God, I'm called of God for Jesus because of his he got baptized with the fullness of the Holy Spirit and kept the fullness of the Holy Spirit. He was able to go into Gethsemane one visit and get total victory. But for you that has to constantly pray to keep yourself filled with the Holy Spirit, to keep yourself in the love of God, to keep yourself even remotely interested in going on with God, God's got an appointment for many visits to Gethsemane. How many, Pastor? <laughs> Why? Because we need to find out this is going to be hard. Listen to me. If you're called of God, if you really are saying, I'm, I'm called to God, I don't want to be sent to Bible school. I want to be sent to the Spirit school. Amen. I want God to raise me up. I want God to make me a lively stone. Amen. I want God to be able to build His kingdom on me. Amen. Not the world build its system on me. I want what I do in life and do for God to have eternal reward. Amen. I want it to be a rock hewn by the hand of Jesus Christ himself Amen. and sealed by the power of the Holy Ghost and not approval of man. Amen. Don't dare touch this thing because if it be of God, you can't stop it. Just stand by and watch. If it's not God, it will die its own death. Amen. That's what the high priest said about the ministry of Jesus. You better watch how you handle this man. If you want to live with God where nothing moves you, and at the end of your life in the presence of God, he says, well done, and has rewards to give you that last for eternity, you will go to Gethsemane many, 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 many times. Because only what God builds, made of God, from God, will stay with God. Amen. 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 The, the whole purpose of Gethsemane is getting all the slime out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. So we're going to look at Gethsemane part two. Transform or deform. Gethsemane part two. Are you transformed or deformed? No. What do you mean deformed? Are you out of shape? How to design out of purpose with God because you've allowed the world to shape you in your calling? God transforms you into His image. Natural reason will disform and disfigure you into the world's image of the ministry. Come on. And only sincere visits to Gethsemane will transform you. Plain church will disform you. Come on. And get you to start thinking things that it's all right with God to do this. It's all right with God to have this. It's like all right with God to do it this way when God doesn't approve of it at all. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to, glory to Jesus. Glory to I'm Jesus. getting letters and, and, and response from last week saying, I'm called of God. I want some help. Well, the help is today. You're going to get this. And you're going to have to let God refigure you reshape you, 
restructure you, rearrange you, put all your joints back into socket. Because most of us live independent of what God's want. We're arms and legs and, and feet and hands dislocated from the body of Christ, even though we belong to the body of Christ. Come on. And that's called living self-will. What happens if my arm moves independent of my body? It just does what it wants. You know, you might want to have that fixed. Everybody knows that's not normal. Except in the spirit realm, that's how the body of Christ looks. Because I'll do ministry my way, and, and I, I don't have to go to church, and you can't make me tithe. And, and, yeah, I love God, but I'm not going to church. Right. Just out here doing whatever I want, and it looks like a spastic mess. Amen. They can't even get down the street. Amen. And all the other spastics are saying, well, I agree with you. You're right, on." And Amen. God's going, just let me heal you. Yes. Amen. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. When a spastic looks at the spastic, they look normal together. Right. But somebody that's healed and whole and everything works right as it's designed, that looks abnormal. This form. Come on. You won't see how sick it is till you get in the presence of the healer. Yes. Amen. Amen. And you've got to be hungry Amen. enough to come to the garden. He won't drag you there. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. And when you get there, then your eyes start getting open and he starts letting you see how much has to be changed. Yes. And that causes you to die because you liked a lot of stuff that came with you. Right. And that's why nobody out there really wants to go there unless the hunger of God draws you there. You'll never go in ministry higher than your business to Gethsemane. Hallelujah. Amen. I didn't say the slime brick made Bible schools. I said ministry. Go on a rock, making life living stones. Hallelujah. Of which Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. That means everything hangs on him, and you don't come up with your own Bible doctrine. Amen. The word of God is final authority. If homosexuality was a sin 5,000 years ago, it's a sin in grandma's day, it's a sin in mama's day, it's a sin in your day, it's a sin till the rapture. Amen. And your doctrine doesn't change with the slime of the world. Amen. 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 Now, Ruth, why in this Pentecostal church? Why? Because you've been slimed. Amen. Just like in Ghostbusters, the demons have slimed you. And you're not normal anymore. You're this twisted, disformed mentality of Christianity that doesn't biblically exist. Amen. 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 <laughs> well, I'm glad I came to church. Praise the Lord. Amen. You are if you're hungry. Amen. You'll shove the plate away if you're just playing church. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Well, let's look at Je Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm not going to teach too long. I'm going to move fast. When you get there, get, look at verse 10 with me. Say amen. God's speaking to the prophet Jeremiah. Amen. I can't wait for a PMP to go off and all you people with your cell phone Bibles don't work no more. Hallelujah. I hate it. <laughs> I don't even think God approves of them. <laughs> Am I talking about Stephen? Yes. <laughs> you know, you're just not going to pass down the, fire, the, the Bible, the, the, the heirloom of the family laptop. <laughs> it just doesn't even sound like family Bibles have been passed down your family iPhones. Praise God, they get out and they just don't. You can nuke this whole place and go back to Stone Age. I can still open this up and read it. Amen. 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 <laughs> it's a problem, brother. Just, 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 Have you found verse 10? Amen. Amen. Now watch this. God speaking to the prophet of God. Listen to what he said. Yes. See, I have this day set you over nations, over kingdoms, to root up 
Write that down. To pull down. Write that down. And to destroy. Write that down. And to throw down. Now, how many negatives is that right there? Four? Four. The first four manifestations of his ministry are destructive to what has already been established. You didn't even get that. Amen. Come on, brother. You didn't even get that. Let me take a, take a moment so it doesn't go right past you. Jeremiah 1, 10. Jeremiah 1, 10. See this day I have set you over nations, over kingdoms. Well, the kingdom of darkness is powerful. Well, God said this man over them. Yes. If you operate in a prophetic time under prophetic mantle, around prophetic ministries, you'll start rising up over the perversion of the kingdom that you live in. Amen. Well, glory to God. I'm just going to go out and preach. Is that okay? Amen. And whether you're with me or not, that's between you and God. Over kingdoms to root up, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down. To root up what? To pull down what? To destroy what? To throw down what? Come on, talk to me. What? What was already built. By who? Not by God, by man. So there's a specific calling on this prophet to address kingdoms that were built out of brick and slime and had nothing to do with God. And the ministry of God was to deal with it by destroying it. Amen. Not live with it. Amen. Amen. And then after you do the negative stuff that nobody wants to go to church about and hear about and deal with and sit under, then God builds. Right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Folks, you just better get that as a revelation of the Holy Spirit. Everybody wants a ministry. They want it now. They want it easy. And they want to be blessed. And they want everybody to love them. And God said, if you're going to grow and build my kingdom over their kingdom, you've got to tear down, root up, pluck up, and destroy everything that established itself without my kingdom approval first. Amen. That's Gethsemane. Amen. Amen. And then after that's all dealt with, I'll build. Amen. We want to build on my unrenewed emotions. I've got a mighty ministry, but I cuss my wife. I have a healing ministry, but I never tithe. Right. Oh, God called me as a prophet, but I hate people. Right. We want God to just build on this old trash that we built up in our soul and our flesh and our emotions. And Mama said, isn't he sweet? And never corrected us. And pastors never corrected us. And God won't build on it. Amen. 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 Bible school will. They won't even ask you if you love your mother. Right. God does. Amen. I'm out. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the first thing, when you're dealing with kingdoms that you live in that are anti-Christ and anti-God, God didn't say get socially acceptable, get politically correct. He said destroy the spirits in you. Praise God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then after all this negative stuff, then what did God say? Then to build and to plant. How many of you know Pastor T.C.'s policy in this church? I don't build on anybody that comes now and then. Amen. I don't build on, I don't give my, I don't even give my personal time to people that visit when they're in the mood. Amen. Well, can I have, can I ask you a question? No, I'm busy. Well, how do you know? You didn't check the schedule. My schedule says I don't minister to people that aren't hungry. Amen. Come on. Until you're sold out enough to get connected, committed, and deal like God. I want to grow. Just there's a woman that sent me any, uh, a, a message that watched last week's video. And let me tell you something, Sister Jessica. Your heart's right on. If your heart's reflected in what you wrote, Pastor Darlene and I, your heart's right on. You are very near the kingdom of God in the prophetic call of God on your life. And you're going to get there. Because this woman wrote me. I want to grow. I don't care if I have to be corrected. Correct me, but I want to be what God called me to be. Amen. That right there put that woman on a foundation that 99.9% .9 of 
100% of the so-called called ones will never get to. Amen. Amen. Because it's a lot easier to go to Bible school for two years, get a piece of paper, and go out and play your slimy church. Amen. I mean, slimy is in what you used to build it with. Amen. Man's fleshly stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. God doesn't even get the instruction to build and plant kingdom seed in that until all that other stuff is dealt with, with first. So I don't, I don't, Pastor Darrell, now listen to me. I'm not trying to sound arrogant. I'm telling you something I've lived my entire ministerial life. I've known this man for what, over 25 years? I love him like my own brother. I weep tears for him. Pastor Tony, the same thing. Pray, pray for both of you every single morning. Let's go. Let's go. How many times have I been to your house? Never. Never. How many times have I been to your house? Zero. How many times have you been to my house? Three. Three times in almost ten years. Go inside twice. <laughs> yeah, you picked me up twice. <laughs> Get out of my yard! <laughs> But why? Because I just don't get caught up in casual stuff that's not kingdom. Amen. And people that are in my life are people that have already proved when, when God calls me home if the Lord tarries, they step right into this pulpit and carry on. They paid the price. That's why I invest my heart in you. I give my love to whosoever will. I invest my kingdom heart into the hungry. Amen. 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 And so did Jesus. He fed the multitude. He only empowered 12. Right. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, how many people walk around with gifts and signs and wonders that really aren't that much of a wonder? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not saying this and preaching this because it sounds good on TV. Oh, isn't that wonderful? This is stuff I've lived. I love this man. I'll give him anything I've got. And he's never I've never been in his house. I don't think he's ever been in my house. But we are absolutely in everything I plant into his life constantly. Same, same thing with Pastor Tony and Pastor Tony. I don't, I don't give anything of the kingdom to plant and build on and expect stability on anybody that's casual with God. Amen. It's foolishness. Amen. It's foolishness. It's like Pastor Darrell said about when he was a kid. Yeah, I used to be a minister. How many times have you bought a car from somebody that would used to be in the ministry? How many times have you bought shoes from somebody who used to be in the ministry? How many times have you went to a real estate agent and they went to Bible college? They're out there by the tens of thousands Amen. doing nothing. For God, because they went to Bible school. Amen. Until you visit Gethsemane and you is burnt out of you, you will never change. Amen. 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 Well, I'd rather go to, go to counseling. Your counselor needs to go to Gethsemane. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Remember, Jesus never talked to a devil about why he's there. Now, why do you possess this child? Amen. Right? How did you get in him? Why don't you love your mother? What makes you still a pit lovers? He didn't go through all that. Amen. He said, come out! Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right? Now, all over the world right now, but well, that's Old Testament. We're under grace now. I hear it every single time I teach. Right. That, that's legalism, Pastor. You're bought, you're, you, you, don't under, you don't walk in love. That's not God. We're in the New Testament. We're under grace. We're under love. Why well, does guess God was just a hater until the New Testament? That's what you're saying. It's the exact same God in Genesis 1 1 as it is in Revelation. Yes. Amen. The only thing that's changed is how He deals with you based on your relationship. With the Son. Amen. He wasn't a hater before Jesus because God so loved the world the Son came. Yes. Amen. 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 So you better watch how you talk to God. 
and you're going to stay under legalism and law. It says that the law was to keep us under control until grace could take over. Amen. Amen. But as long as you're saying no to what Jesus wants, you automatically bring yourself under the law. Come on. How many Christians get speeding tickets? Would Jesus speed if he drove a car? So you're automatically brought under the law because you're saying no to what Jesus wants. Don't Amen. look at me with big old Amen. cow eyes like you don't can't figure out what I'm talking about. Amen. Does God love the little girl in the back seat with her boyfriend? Yes. But as soon as she gets in the back seat, she's brought under the law. You play, you pay. Amen. No matter how much you talk in tongues. So every time you say no to Jesus, you're brought immediately into the bondage of the law. And you have to pay the debt. You see, the repentance or go the full way. Oh, yeah. Well, how come I can't cast that devil out? Because he's waiting to hand you a cold beer after you have... <laughs> that act of sin. I'll right. just put it that way. How many sippy sins do we have? Amen. It just get quiet, mister. It just really quiet, mister. I wonder why. You can put on any face you want, church. But the only one that's hungry is you. If you're hungry, you're hungry. If you're not, you're not. You'll play every kind of a weird make-believe, God-made church structure, Bible seminary thinking, the most bizarre stuff you can imagine as long as it fits what you want. Right. And with it comes death. Right. That's what this Gethsemane was all about. Making sure nothing was able to stand between this man, Jesus, and that cross God's plan. Amen. Amen. Now, let's look at the New Testament very quickly. 2 Timothy chapter 4. I'm going to move very fast now. Verses 1 and 2. You can even write them down if you want. Don't even turn there. Just let me fly with the Holy Ghost. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I charge thee, these are the pastoral epistles of Paul to the young pastor of Timothy. These are considered pastoral epistles. Books that apply directly to what? Say it with me. Ministers. Amen. These are books written to ministers. These are books written to the church. That nowadays, half the people that claim Jesus are saying, you don't have to go to church. Well, that means that these books don't apply anymore. Come on. Come on. But not one jot or tittle of my word will pass away. So that means your doctrine's wrong. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I charge thee therefore before God. Now, Timothy is being addressed to, by his spiritual father, Paul, with what he said is this is very serious. You better pay attention. Amen. This isn't having church. This is saying, thus said the Lord, and you're going to be eternally responsible for what I'm about to say. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead, or the alive and the dead, at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Don't preach bricks. Come on. Don't preach what they want to hear. Preach the word. Amen. Preach, thus saith the Lord. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost backbone to stand up and say, this is what the Lord says, whether should I please you or should I please God, then you're not fit for ministry yet. Amen. 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 So good. Amen. And it's a sure sign you don't pray in the Holy Ghost enough because if you pray in the Holy Ghost, it builds you up. It strengthens you. When Peter got baptized with the Holy Ghost, he didn't run from the crowd. He stood over the crowd and said, Thus saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. You would go instantly from coward to courageous. Yes. So all this political correct, worried about what they think nonsense proves you don't pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just preached some fire into my bones. Amen. Preach the word. 
Say it with me. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. You don't go to church when you feel like it. Yes, amen. You don't act Christian when it's convenient. Amen. You don't say hallelujah when you feel perfect in your body. Amen. You do this kingdom stuff all the time, good or bad, healthy or sick, popular or rejected. Yes, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Why? For their time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, they shall heap unto themselves brick teachers having itching ears, made and called by man. Amen. Amen. So what's the answer to that? You be instant. You be solid. You be strong. You be powerful all the time. Yes. And you preach only the word. And what do you do? You rebuke. Amen. Uh oh. In the New Testament. Amen. Amen. You rebuke and reprove. Amen. Well, there's an example right there. Evidently, this ministry to Jeremiah and a ministry to Timothy, the the uh, the, the pastor also have rebuke and attacking and dealing with stuff in, in their ministry. Yes. Old Testament and New Testament. Under God's wrath and under God's grace. Yes. Under the law and under the mercy. Yes. Rebuke, tear down, destroy, root up before you build. Rebuke and reprove, then exhort and build. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know what? There's hardly anybody out there looking for a church will say, correct me. Fix me. Amen. Point out where I'm missing it. They ain't out there looking for that. No. Why? Because they're now in this generation right here where they can't endure sound doctrine anymore. I want a Amen. brick preacher to preach what I want to hear. He ain't getting a dime out of me and I won't go to his church. Right. You better behave, preacher. Amen. Amen. Well, any preacher that preaches worried about what's in your wallet is a prostitute. Amen. And he's not a man or a woman of God. Amen. He's a whore. Amen. You pay him, he'll play for you. Hallelujah. It's spiritual whoredoms. Amen. Come out from among them. Yes. And build your life and your church on the rock of your salvation, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, now look over at Titus chapter 2. Well, I'm glad I came to church. Yes. Titus chapter 2. Say amen when you're there. Amen. Verse 15. These things speak. He's now talking to a young man of God named Titus. Teach and preach and speak these things. Exhort and rebuke with all authority. Not, well, I'd like to submit something to your thinking. Come on, brother. I'd just like to put some out there and see if we can handle it or not. How about thus said the Lord? Amen? Amen. Are you getting this? Yes. Now what did he just say to another pastor? Look at it again. These things speak, exhort, and what? Rebuke. With all authority. There's nobody here to rent from. Hallelujah. All right, now look with me very quickly at verse chapter 1, verse 13. Chapter 1, verse 13. This witness is true. Therefore, or wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that may, they may be sound in faith. Amen. What did you just say? Them There's people that need to be rebuked that their faith is actual faith. Hang on a minute. What's going on? You got to move your car? Maybe. All right. Praise the Lord. Well, everybody. You need to pray for us out there. We're already outgrowing where God's called us. Amen. Amen. Look at this. This witness is true, wherefore rebuke them. This is the Apostle Paul telling 
at him, telling him there's people that need to be rebuked. You know, we live in a generation where everybody's opinion is, the, the answer to everything is just love them. Right. And they don't understand that love corrects. Yes. Please pay attention. Amen. They don't understand that love corrects. They mean anybody that raised their children their whole life and never rebuked, instructed, or corrected, that's a child destined for prison. Amen. Amen. Love corrects. Don't change the Bible. Amen. Amen. You won't grow into the man or woman of God you're called to grow into without rebuke and correction. Yes. And what this woman wrote in her very first letter to Pastor Darlene and I was, I want to know how to grow with the Lord, even if I have to be corrected and rebuked. Amen. That's a woman that's going to be growing in the Lord and God making her everything she's called to be. Yes. Because most people out there claiming to have a call to ministry will not endure sound doctrine, let alone open rebuke. And folks, I'm not trying to raise up a church where everybody comes into church and let me yell at you and correct you. Amen. That's not the goal. But when thus saith the Lord offends you, you need to be corrected. Yes. Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you a hint. It'll help your hearts a lot. Are you ready? Amen. When somebody thinks, says, thus saith the Lord, and you know it is according to Scripture, and it still offends you, the Spirit has rebuked you. And the offense is evidence that you need to repent. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Did you hear me? Yes. You don't mean me stand up and say, stop that, knock it off, and, and, and make sure you start this. You don't need me to do that in public. If me just preaching slaps you up the side of the head, it impacts your heart, it offends you, that means the Holy Ghost has rebuked you. Yes. Amen. And what you do after that determines whether you accepted that rebuke and you're going to grow from it, or are you going to be like 99% of them and just scatter? With your ministry. Amen. 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 Well, this is good stuff. Yes, amen. amen. Now look at First Timothy. Look at somebody say, I'm glad I came. I'm glad I came. First Timothy chapter 5. Covering a lot of territory, but it's good stuff. Amen. 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 And I pray to God the people of the world have ears to hear this and really take a hold of it so you can, so you can explode in your growth with Jesus Christ. Because we're out of time, we need to be what we're called to be now. Amen. Amen. First Timothy chapter five, look at verse twenty. Them that sin, well, just love them. Those that sin, well, they just don't know any better. Just pray for them. We others, that's part of it. But if you don't pray for them enough to change them pretty quick, they'll go start a church. Amen. And it'll be full of the same sin. Amen. And then it becomes a stronghold in the community. And then you've lost territory with God. You're going to have to study that out before you actually understand what I just said by the Holy Spirit. Every time I preach, I get ten times more, yeah, brother, but we're under grace than I do, amen, man of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Are you ready? Yes. Them that sin, what? Rebuke before all, that others also may fear. Are you listening? Amen. What did Paul say to people that were open sin in church? Rebuke them in front of the church. Amen. Why? So that the rest of the church is afraid to embrace sin with them. Amen. When's the last time you ever saw that? That's why we have such a sin so carnal, fleshly, natural and reasoning church. Instead of the holy church that Jesus said he wants. Without spot and blemish. And I've been guilty as anybody. We all sin. But don't dare stop saying, well, God understands. It's okay. And then just embracing it. Right. Now, Pastor Tony, read that in the Amplified, I guess. As for those elders who continue in sin, reprimand them in the presence of all the congregation so the rest will be warned. So he's actually talking to who? Leadership in the church. Yes. Rebuke them in front of the church so 
that their sin doesn't contaminate the church and the church stays in godly fear. Amen. And not hallelujah, what's it do you? We're under grace. Amen. Come on, brother. Now that's not only out of my Bible, that's out of his Bible. Amen. So when they read the Bible to you, and you can't endure that, and that offends you, consider yourself rebuked by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And if you ignore that, then God puts the Holy Spirit in flesh that you can't ignore, and a man of God with some kind of backbone say, you need to stop that. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen, yes. My Amen. God, my God, Holy Spirit, move in your church like the Bible. Yes. Yes. This is New Testament Bible. Amen. No. This is writing to New Testament churches under the same grace we are under. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. But if I stand up and say, Joel Osteen, you need to repent for not having enough backbone to say Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, I'm called the hater. Right. Because this has been replaced with the slime of your opinion of what God likes. Come on. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody that says Jesus isn't the only way to heaven is an anti-Christ spirit. Yes. Amen. Amen. And I don't have to love that. Amen. I rebuke it. Amen. 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 In hopes that it might repent. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Now look at Hebrews chapter 12. I only read one, one scripture out of the Old Testament, knowing that most will go, well, that's all legalism, and you're bringing people into bondage. Everything else is straight out of the New Testament. What's it do? That deals just as direct and as powerful with error and sin and silliness as the Old Testament prophet was called to. Amen. Amen. So grace doesn't re Amen. replace correction at all. Amen. You, you got to understand, folks, the only thing grace did was put off the judgment and destruction you deserved under the law that came immediately. That's right. Amen. 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 When they cussed Moses to his face, Within a moment, they became leprous. And Moses had to intercede and say, please don't kill him. And that was his own sister and brother. Right. Now, grace puts it off long enough. You're covered by the blood, so you have time for the Holy Spirit to deal with you and repent without destruction. But it's not a seal of it's okay with God now. That's right. Come on, brother. That's exactly right. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 12. Are you learning anything, church? Amen. Amen. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at somebody say, I'm glad you came, ugly. I'm glad, glad you, you came. came. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't say that. That's not love. Look, the flesh stinketh. Yes. Folks, what did God make people out of? Dirt. That's why they always want to do dirty things. This is made out of dirt. It stinks. It smells. It's dirty. The only thing clean is you is the spirit. Stop paddling, stop coddling, comforting, and powdering the dirt you live in. Amen. Come on. Take power over it. It stinks by nature. That's why you got to scrub it and shampoo it twice a day. Or you start stinking. It's dirty. It likes to do dirty things. Amen. The flesh profits you nothing. Stop Amen. making it comfortable. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 12. Now look at verse 5 through 11. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. In the Amplified it says what? And you have forgotten the divine word of encouragement which is addressed to you as sons. My son, do not make light of the discipline of the Lord. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Do not make light, do not make light, do not make light of the discipline of the Lord. He said, you forgot all that. Right. My God, if there's a generation in the church where it's... it's Prolific that they have forgot that is our generation. Amen. 
they forgot that God's exhortation is correction. Amen. And do not lose heart and give up when you are corrected by Him. Stop being like me. Amen. <laughs> I do that to Tony and Daryl all the time. I was on a train of thought, Pastor. Would you just sit over here? I can't do it. <laughs> well, you know, when you when you start sparking each other, it starts fires. And if you got a good church, it gets out of control. And God just starts burning. Amen. Amen. One has an exhortation. One has a tongue. One has a, a word. One has a song. And it just takes off like fire. Amen. And it would be very easy for that to start happening here all the time. Yes. Amen? Amen. Now what? You have forgotten the exhortation which speaks unto you as unto what? Write that down in your heart. As to children. Yes. Boy, this is going to be powerful in just a second. Are you ready? Listen to me, world. Are you ready? Listen to what God's got to say to us. As unto children. It's Absolutely critical you get that part. The exhortation of God as unto children. Amen? Watch. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. Don't get discouraged when God corrects you. Amen? Amen. Nor faint when thou art, what? Rebuked of him. Now what did Jeremiah say? Tear down, destroy, root up, pluck up. What did the Holy Ghost say to Timothy, to Titus? Rebuke, reprove, exhort. Now he's, the Holy Spirit's talking to the church, the, the Hebrews, and saying, don't get all upset and lose hope when God rebukes you. Maybe God's the same yesterday, today, and to forever, and you're the one that's decided to change and get this form. Right. Amen. Amen. When he rebukes you, watch, this is powerful. Faith not when thou art rebuked of him. We don't want no church that will ever rebuke us. So what's that mean? This flesh, this dirt, wants to do dirty things and not be corrected, isn't even seeking God's heart. Amen. Amen. This is powerful. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For, now watch verse 6. Remember I told you rebuke is the love of God so that you can grow. For whom the Lord what? Disciplines. No. For whom the Lord what? Loveth. For whom the Lord what? Loveth. Come on, say it with love. me. I want, I want you to be responsible for the words out of your own mouth. Amen. For whom the Lord love. loveth. For whom the Lord Loveth, he chasteneth. Verse 6, Tony. This is the part I read. Mm -hmm. For the Lord disciplines and corrects those whom he loves. The Lord disciplines and corrects those that he loves. Write this down. If I haven't been disciplined and corrected, uh oh, I haven't experienced the love of God. Right. Come on. Amen. 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 Anybody lets their kids play in the street without correcting them and rebuke them. Do not love that kid. Just soon let him get ran over by a car. I don't care. That's not love at all. Right. Love is get out of the street, boy, do it now. Amen. And a little swat to reinforce it, to bring some sorrow. That's right. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. No, I, can't, I, I can't even preach every seminar that's popping up in my spirit on every verse of God. Praise God. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens. Uh oh, it's going to get powerful now. And scourges every son whom he receives as a son. Amen. What's it saying, Amplified? And he punishes every son whom he receives and welcomes to his heart. And he punishes every son whom he receives and welcomes as his son. That's my boy. He Amen. belongs to me. You don't get that until you've been punished, corrected, and rebuked from his love. Amen. If you've gone to a church 20 years, you've never been corrected, 
You've never been punished. You've never been rebuked. You haven't entered into the sonship of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now, folks, Amen. did I make that up, or did we read it word for word out of His Word? Yes. Amen. How much of that exists in our generation? Very, very little. Now watch this, verse 7. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom the father chastens not? But if you be without chastening, wherefore are all our partakers, if you're, if you're a son of God, all's going to get corrected. If you're a child of God, you are going to get disciplined, spirits, and rebuke. Amen. It's inevitable. You're going to go to Gethsemane. Now watch. Furthermore, what? But if you are without chastening, verse 8, wherefore all are partakers. Say all are partakers. All are partakers. If you're a child of God, all partake of his discipline. Amen. His correction. His spiritual spanking. Amen? Amen. Then are, if you're not, are you, if you're without that chastening, which all are going to be chastened, if you're without it, then are you bastards and not sons? Amen. What's the same amplified? Now, if you are exempt from correction and without discipline, in which all of God's children share, then you are illegitimate children and not sons at all. You're not legitimate with God at all. How Amen. many of you have ever heard that priest? Once saved, always saved. Whoredoms. Yes. You just, you were birthed by some prostitute out on the street. Amen. If you don't come home to daddy, you don't live in daddy's house, you're not his son, you're not corrected, you, you were just birthed by some prostitute in the back seat. Amen. Just say this prayer, it's okay. No, it's not. That's right. If you say that prayer and you get okay, you go home to your father's house. Amen. And you let him raise you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 2. You get more word in this church than most churches in, in a year. Praise God. That's not arrogance. That's just a fact. Amen. Colossians chapter 2. Amen. We're going to look at verse 10 and say amen when you're there. Amen. Amen. That you are complete in Him, which is the head of all principality and power. Look at Pastor. I'm only throwing this in so that everybody's going to write, write me their grace review, rebu re rebuttals and rebukes. I have always said you are saved by grace. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. But where does that exist? Where does that exist? Here's what the grace preachers that want to rebuke you all the time don't get it. The spirit, soul, and body. Pastor Darlene brought that up. This flesh is earthy, made from the earth. It's dirt. It does dirty things, always wants to do dirty things, no matter how sanctified you want to live. Amen if it's true. Amen. Amen. You are complete in Christ in your spirit. Not in your soul and not in your body. That's why you got to renew your mind by the washing of the water of the word and let daddy fix stupid thinking. Amen. Amen. That says God loves homosexuals. You don't got to repent. God made you way that way. That is sick, slimy doctrines from hell that's not right with God even though your spirit's completely right and perfect because it was made so instantly when Jesus came in. Amen. Everything Amen. else has got to submit to God. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's why Paul wrote this, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. you got to get that Holy Ghost full. All of God that is that's in me out through your soul and control the flesh. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not just say, oh, God understands. We're under grace. This will want to take you to hell every day you wake up. Yes. This will want to agree with this if this 
this isn't brought into submission to this. Amen. And whatever two out of three is is going to rule. Right. So you better read the word every day, get strong in the word, pray in the spirit, be strong in the spirit, so that your spirit and your brain agrees against the flesh and God's able to correct you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, this is what I think. You might stop saying that and just repent. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. And we heard from Pastor Daryl through the Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter how many are helping you build Babel. If it's not under God's dominion, it's Babel, and he's going to tear it down. Amen. Amen. Either here or in judgment day. You will be saved, yet all your works will be burned up. And I'll tell you right now, slime is combustible. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Now Philippians 2. We have about 10 more minutes. Amen. Philippians chapter 2. I want you to look at verse 12. Philippians 2, 12. Are you ready? Amen. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I just said it. So this is a very fearful thing, walking and living right with God and letting that salvation that Jesus already gave you perfectly in your spirit take control over your day-to-day -day life. It's not a, it's okay, hon. We're under grace. It's a very fearful lifestyle. Amen. And it should be so fearful it causes you to tremble before you flippantly make stupid decisions thinking it's okay with God. Yes. And the only cure to that is a trip to Gethsemane. Where God causes you to go to your knees in repentance and pray until you sweat blood and get it out of your system. Amen. And when you get up off your knees and leave Gethsemane, that is dead in the ground. Amen. 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 John 12. Gospel of John, chapter 12. Look at verse 23 with me. Amen. And Jesus, Jesus answered and said unto them, The hour is now come, that the Son of Man should be glorified. Truly, truly, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it shall bring forth much fruit. Amen. He that loves his life and protects it with all kinds of doctrines and philosophies so that you can't correct it, he that loves his life shall lose it. And he that hates his, his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. Amen. Jesus said this, unless I die, I'm not going to bear fruit of millions of people born again. Unless you die, your ministry will never bear kingdom fruit. you got to bury everything in your life under the blood of Jesus and never let it be resurrected to bear kingdom eternal fruit that lasts forever. And until you're willing to start the dying process, fruit never starts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, was the Holy Ghost sent through Pastor Darlene. She gets up and she says, this is what we need to pray. Less of me, more of you. Amen. I've got to die. What did the great John the, the Baptist preach? The Messiah is coming. And it's time for me to decrease that he might increase. I want to learn how to be blessed. You want to decorate filthy flesh that's never repented and think it's a proof that you're walking in the kingdom of God. Come on, brother. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Lord Jesus. John chapter 15. So Jesus said a principle, unless it dies, 
it doesn't produce fruit. Amen. Please, a little bit quieter. Unless it dies, it doesn't produce fruit. That's a kingdom principle. Stephen, unless you die, you'll never produce kingdom fruit for God. Less of me, more of him. The more I die, there's more fruit. Amen. Well, I want to be respected. Guess where you need to go? Off to the garden. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What did Jesus say? Pick up your cross. What? One time and it's all over. You're saved by grace. No. Pick up your cross daily. daily die to yourself daily and follow me. Visit Gethsemane daily. There, I just let it out of the bag. How much am I going to have to do? How many times am I going to go to Gethsemane? Multiple times daily. Until it starts dying, dying. You'll be in the, in the, in the middle of a checkout and want to answer the, the, the case you the wrong way. And God will say, you better stop that. No, sir, I'm sorry. Ma'am, I'm sorry I talked to you in that tone of voice. And you'd rather take a beating than humble yourself in front of everybody in the line and say, I just I just spoke to you harshly and rudely in the Holy Spirit. I'm a Christian. I'm not supposed to talk like that. I need to repent. Will you please forgive me? Oh, it's okay. No, it's not okay. Because I'm in serious trouble with God right now. I want God to bless my life and use me. And I cannot be used operating in the flesh demanding you respect me. Please forgive me. And everybody in the life of it. I never heard that. I thought they all wanted to buy jets. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gethsemane will be a call right here in that temple she was talking about. It exists in here. It exists in your prayer room. And this goes with you. And you'll have to go there dozens of times a day until the old Tommy dies and can't open his mouth anymore. Can't make the decisions. Can't build a slimy existence. Hallelujah. Then the kingdom comes. Then that salvation comes out. Then fruit starts about him. I was going to title this Gethsemane. That corpse looks familiar. But he didn't want to depress you. <laughs> well, he did depress me. Well, that means the Holy Ghost rebuked you. Because if you read that, it says no correction for the moment. All correction for the moment is grievous. When God corrects you, don't go, oh, praise God. You do it if you're extremely mature. But until you get to that level where you recognize the value of it, you go, ha, 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 ha. and you would rather take a beating than go through the correction of the Lord. Most people would rather go take, go take a beating than sit in this church. Because I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what God wants to say to you. Yes. Amen. God. John chapter 15, are you ready? Amen. Verse Amen. 1, I am the vine, I am the true vine. My father is the husbandman. Every branch, say every branch. Every branch. Look at somebody say, that means you, ugly. That means you. That means you, ugly. No, you didn't obey. I said, that means you, ugly. That means you, ugly. I didn't say you. He pointed at me and said, he's far enough. You told me to say it to somebody, you didn't say I had to say it to her. I can take it. Why? Because this is ugly. Amen. And until you start treating it as offensive to God and stop pampering it, you'll never get the breakthrough. You'll never you'll never go to Gethsemane until you're willing to punish this. I am the true vine. My father is the husbandman. Every branch. Every branch. In me. Are you in Christ? Yes. That means he's talking to every one of us. Amen? Amen. Every branch that is in me that bears not fruit. Remember, 85% of the body of Christ has never led one person to Jesus. That's a fruitless life. I don't care what kind of house you live in. I don't care what kind of car you drive. I don't care if you own eight airplanes. If you've never led anybody to Jesus, you are without fruit. Amen. Come on. Because the fruit of a person is a person. The fruit of the kingdom is a kingdom person. Not a car, not a house, not a boat, not a business, not a bank account. The fruit of a kingdom person is another kingdom person. Amen. The fruit of your womb is a what? A human being birthed. 
until you've led somebody to Jesus, you've led your life completely without fruit. Amen. Amen. Every branch that is in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he what? Purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. You're not going to grow and grow in your effectiveness and grow in your ministry beyond each stage of rebuke and correction with God. And yeah. even if you're bearing fruit, it doesn't exempt you from being purged, corrected, rebuked of God. In that correction, you become more fruitful. And that's what God cares about, not how good this feels. Amen. Come on. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to close with this. We said this last week. What does Gethsemane mean? The place of crushing or pressing. The wine press. Or the oil press. They would put olives in there and grind it. And all the juice, all the oil, which is a type and shadow of the Holy Spirit and healing, will come out into anointing oil. Amen. Amen? Amen. They put grapes in there and grind them. And it all come out into what? Wine. Not wine, grape juice. And then that grape juice, listen, listen, has to be placed in skins or bottles and left to itself and secluded till it ferments and ages. Then it becomes wine, which is a type and shadow of the Holy Spirit. You'll never walk in the Holy Spirit more than you have experienced crushing and correction under the hand of God. And that's what produces the anointing of the presence and the healing power of the presence of the Holy Spirit in you. Amen. Look, I can give Tony a grape and what can he do with it? You can eat it. It's a perfectly good grape. Okay, I had a grape. What did it do for him? Nothing. He just enjoyed a grape. I could take a bunch of grapes, grind them, press them until it produces the fruit of that grape or the juice of that grape, and then bottle it, set it off to the side, seclude it, make it stay by itself without getting involved in anything else, and it matures and ferments. Then that juice becomes wine. Now listen, I can take that grape and have it act like I'm, I'm breaking it and squirt it in Tony's face and all he gets is grape juice in his face. So just being crushed isn't the totality of it. Just God correcting you. If you don't stay in one place and submit to it and mature, you don't become wine. You're just grape juice. Amen. But if you stay in one place and age and grow and mature, you become wine. Then wine becomes what? How come nobody listens to me? Because you're grape juice. Every time you feel like it, you go to another church, you go to another ministry, you're looking for your miracle here, you're looking for your break. Oh, he's got a, if he lays hands on me, then I'm going to have a ministry. No, your ministry starts in Gethsemane. And then God says, Get bottled, get placed in one place and sit there till you mature and age and ferment. And then through God's process of metamorphosis, you become not grape juice, but wine. And now wine is the intoxicating effect of the Holy Ghost that brings joy to the world. Amen. Two stage, well, three stages. Gethsemane, crushing, and aging. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I can tell you how come the church, most of the church is not flowing in the Holy Spirit wine of God. Why? Because they're not intoxicating anybody around them. Wine is intoxicating. Grape juice isn't. Oh, I'd say. And you just nibble off each other's grapes. But the full process is to become an intoxicating effect 
on people's lives. Another way you can tell people aren't full of the Holy Ghost or matured in the Lord is because when you're drunk, what do drunks act like? Fear goes away. They become fully courageous. And they'll do stuff like ride motorcycles when they don't want them to. And they'll jump off buildings and think they can make it to the other building while they're drunk when they can. They become bold, they become without fear, and they become ready to fight. We've got a church that can't say anything from God, fearful about offending everybody, and don't want to fight nothing. Right. Right. Come on, brother. That's a church that's never started any process to grow up with God, has never been to Gethsemane. Just happy to eat daddy's grapes. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. You learn anything? Good. You just stay the way you are, and you'll be disfigured in this form in God's eyes. Or you can let God reshape you into the image of Christ and be transformed to where you can become bold, fight the good fight of faith, intoxicating the people that are looking for answers, and without fear in a confusing world full of nothing but confusion and fear. They're not looking for another church. They're not looking for another role of Christians in. Well, I'd say, do you want to go to the bar? Right. They're looking for the real deal. Amen. And when you become the real deal, they'll start coming out of the woodworks to find you. Did you hear me? Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I delivered this word with fear in my heart, with trembling in my soul. With absolute dependence on the Holy Spirit to touch lives and hearts. Dear God, mix the word that was preached with the resurrection, delivery, reshaping, transforming power of the Holy Spirit and change lives all over the world that hear this message. Let them never be the same again. Let them never be the same again. Let it change their lives. Let it fill them with the love of God that compels them to go to the garden and be transformed by the hand of God and live the rest of their lives and able to intoxicate a thirsty world with the presence of Jesus. Father God, I pray it in Jesus' name. I believe that not one word falls to the ground. And I believe people all over the world are drinking deeply of this. And they're becoming bold in the Lord. And changed in the Lord. And courageous in the Lord. And ready to fight for the Lord. And die to self and never look back. I pray it. I believe it. I command it to be done in Jesus' name. All over the world. And the people of God said. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Pastor Daryl and Pastor Tony come up. Everybody else bow their heads, please. Pastor.